Hey there, Mr. Weaver here. This is Module 3, Lesson 3, Linearity and Continuity of Graphs. After this lesson, you need to be able to determine whether functions are continuous, discrete, or neither, and determine whether functions are linear or nonlinear. Let's learn discrete and continuous functions. Here we're given a table where we have discrete, continuous, or neither discrete nor continuous functions. So let's look at how each look. It's all about how they look. So discrete functions are just points that are not connected. So we can see here, there's just a bunch of random coordinates. They are not connected by a line. That is discrete. So when we figure out our domain and our range, they are going to be individual values where it's going to be the numbers listed out. For continuous functions, it might have some dots to begin with, but they are going to be connected to form either a straight line or a curve of some sort. So here we can see that we have a line that is drawn. If it's a function and it's continuous, your domain is going to be all real numbers. Or sometimes you might see that as like negative infinity to positive infinity written like this. Or you might see it written like, oops, that should be negative. Or you might see it written like this. Two different ways to mean the same thing. It just means all the numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. And it's an x since we're talking about domain. Domain is your x values. Then your range, depending on your type of function, this could change. If it's neither discrete nor continuous, you're going to have a combination of the two. So sometimes you might have points. Sometimes you might have parts of lines. But it's not one continuous line throughout. So if we look here, we have a line, but then it stops. And then there's nothing. And then we have a line again. The line did not continue throughout the whole thing. So this would not be either discrete or continuous. And the domain and range on those are going to vary because it depends on where the lines and the points are. Example one, determine continuity. Our real context here is books. The Bargain Book Barn sells young adult novels on a sliding scale. That is, the more books you buy, the cheaper they are. Let f of x model the store's prices for given quantities. Is f of x discrete or continuous? Explain your reasoning. Use the table in the context of the situation. The quantity and price correspond to ordered pairs like one and $1.50, or two and $2.90 and then they can be graphed. But because books are not sold in fractional quantities, right? you cannot buy part of a book, then the number of books and their prices cannot have between values. I can't have a point between one and two. I can't have a point between two and three. So in this situation, we should not connect the dots, which means this is a discrete function. And our domain and range here are the set of individual values, which we can find in our table, domain, and range. Example two, determine continuity by using graphs. Determine whether f of x and g of x are continuous, discrete, or neither. Explain your reasoning. For f of x, I can see that my graph is connected by a curve and there are no gaps in it. This would mean that because it's graphed with a single curve, it is continuous. In this particular one, the domain and range are both all real numbers. It goes forever to the left and the right for the domain, and it goes forever up and down for the range. In B, G of X, we can see there's part of a line here, part of a line here, and a single dot here. It has continuous sections, but not one single line or curve. It's bits and pieces. So this would be neither discrete nor continuous. And our domains here would just be intervals of values based on what is given. Check your understanding. Determine whether F of X is continuous, discrete, or neither. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said this function is discrete because it is shown as a bunch of points that are not connected. Example three, apply discrete and continuous functions. Our real context is detective. As a private investigator, Tia charges $25 per hour for any amount of time up to eight hours and then a flat rate of $250 per day. Use the graph to determine if the function that models this situation is discrete, continuous, or neither. So first, is it discrete? If we look at our graph, we have a little section here that's part of a line, and then dots afterward. So is it discrete? No, it's not only made of individual points. Is it continuous? No, it's not drawn with a straight line or smooth curve. So is it neither? Yes, this is neither continuous nor discrete. It is made up of both parts of lines and, and points. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and determine if the graph shown is discrete, continuous, or neither. Pause the video now and complete the check.
check your answer. You should have said, this function is continuous. It is drawn with a smooth curve that keeps going up and down, but there are no gaps in the curve. Let's learn linear and nonlinear functions. A linear function is a function that has a graph that's a straight line. For linear functions, if the domain of the function is all real numbers, then the function is continuous. We could have a linear function that was discrete. It would just have a domain of individual values. A linear equation can be used to describe a linear function. And linear equations are often written in standard form. There are also other forms of linear equations, which we will learn in module four. Our key concept here is standard form of a linear equation. So the standard form of a linear equation is ax plus by equals c, where a is a positive number, a and b both cannot be zero, and a, b, and c technically should not have a greatest common factor other than one. So some examples, we could have 2x plus 5y equals seven. We can see a is two, b is five, c is seven. This is a linear equation that's in standard form because a is greater than zero, a and b are both not zero, and a, b, and c do not have a greatest common factor that is greater than one. So that is in standard form. In our second example, we have x equals negative three. Here, this is really just written as one x plus zero y equals negative three. So the number out front is positive, a is positive. A and B are not both zero. B is zero, that's fine, as long as they're not both zero. And then A, B, and C, again, don't have a greatest common factor other than one. So even though it doesn't look the same, this is also written in standard form. And we would write it more like this if we wanted it into the standard form that is shown here. A nonlinear function has a graph with a set of points that cannot all lie on the same line. An equation that represents a nonlinear function cannot be expressed in that standard form. The function values of a linear function change at a constant rate and this is going to be important to see, linear is a constant rate for equivalent changes in x values. The change in the function values for a non-linear function will vary, so they won't be the same every time. And we'll see this in a future example. Example four, linear and non-linear functions. Determine whether y equals 4x squared minus the quantity 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 is an equation for a linear or non-linear function. We're going to look at two ways to tell. One, doing it algebraically as shown here, and then we will look at graphing the function on Desmos. So step one, simplify the equation. We're gonna attempt to get it into standard form. If we can get it into standard form, then it's linear. If we cannot, it's nonlinear. So simplifying first, two x quantity squared is four x squared. Four x squared minus four x squared is zero. So we're left with three x minus five. Now we're gonna rewrite that into standard form. First, by subtracting three x from both sides. Then we're gonna multiply each side by negative one. So essentially multiplying that whole thing. And we end up with three X minus Y equals five. Is that in standard form? We have A is three, B is negative one, C is five. It is written in the form AX plus BY equals C. So the equation that we started with is linear. In Desmos, if I type in my function, I'm just gonna look at what the graph looks like. A linear function has a graph that is a straight line. Is that what happened here? Yes, this graph made a straight line, so this is a linear function. Check your understanding. Is the function shown linear or nonlinear? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that this is linear. If we were calculating this out, first the square root of nine is three, so we would end up with 3x squared minus 3x squared minus y equals 17. Those would end up canceling out. We end up with negative y equals 17. There are no x's, so I'm just gonna write zero x. Now I'm in the form of ax plus by equals c. a is zero. It's okay if a is zero, as long as it's not negative. b, the number in front of y, is negative one, and c is equal to 17. They don't have a greatest common factor other than one, so we are in standard form. So this is linear. You could have also typed that function into Desmos and saw that it gave you a graph of a straight line. Example five, identify linear and nonlinear functions. Determine whether y equals three x to the third power minus x to the third power plus three x plus six is an equation for a linear or nonlinear function. We're gonna follow the same process and attempt to get it into standard form. So when I simplify the equation, 
I have some like terms. They have both are x to the third power. So 3x to the third power minus 1x to the third power is 2x to the third power. I can't do anything further than that. So now I'm going to try to rewrite it in the form ax plus by equals c. So to do that, I would subtract both of these things from both sides so that I get my c value on its own, which is 6. Then multiply by negative 1 to make that x value positive, And we end up with 2x to the third power plus 3x minus y equals negative 6. That is not in the form that we need. So this function that we started with is nonlinear. Again, if we go into Desmos and type in our function that was shown, we're looking to see, is it a straight line? It looks pretty straight. However, right here, there is a little bit of a place where it curves ever so slightly. So it's not a perfectly straight line. This is nonlinear. Check your understanding. Determine if the function shown is linear or nonlinear. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found that this is nonlinear. In fact, if you were to check on Desmos, it looks like this, which really means it's not even a function at all because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. But it is nonlinear since the graph did not make a straight line. Example six, functions in table form. Our real context here is soccer. Selena kicks a soccer ball. The height of the ball after each half second is recorded in the table. Is the function that models the height of the ball a linear or nonlinear function? So if we remember back to the learn part, in order for it to be a linear function, the amount that it's changing needs to be constant. So it's changing the same thing over and over and over. If it's nonlinear, it's non-constant, it varies. So we're gonna check. During the first half second interval, so from zero to 0 0.5, the height went from two to 28. That means that the height went up by 26 feet. So if this was a linear function, then the next one, the next half second interval, should also be going up by 26 feet because that needs to be constant. So from 0 0.5 to one, this time the height went from 28 to 46, which only increased by 18 feet. So since the height varies over two equal intervals, this must be a non-linear function. If it was linear, it would be going up the same amount each time. And in fact, it would keep going up, 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 which we know which we should know about how if a ball is kicked into the air, it's going to go up and then come back down. That is non-linear. It does not continue in a straight line forever and ever. Check your understanding. Determine if the values in the table are modeled by a linear or non-linear function. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said the first table is linear while the second table is non-linear. Be careful on this one. We want to check equal intervals. So if we notice the x value here, negative one to zero is going up by one, but zero to two is going up by two. So let's check two to three, because that's also where it's going up by one. Then on the other side, how did it change? It went up three. And then our other one, how did that go? Also up three. Zero to two did still follow the same pattern. It just went two spaces. And if we went up two spaces, then it also went up three and then three. So this is linear because it's going up the same amount each time. The second one is nonlinear. Here we have a couple right next to each other that are easy to check. So negative one to negative eight, that went down seven. But in the next second, it went from negative eight to negative 27. That's down 19. Those are not the same amount. So it would be nonlinear. Similar to checking our equations to see if they were linear or nonlinear, I could also use Desmos. So if I type in and go to add a table, I can type in my table values and I can check to see if they are going in a straight line. If we're not sure, what you can do is click and hold on the dot and then turn the line on and you can check and see, does that make a straight line? This one, yes, it did. If I were to check the second one and type it in, I can see that although it may appear as I zoom out that it's a straight line, originally, it's definitely not a straight line, so this is a nonlinear function. Again, I just typed in the table and saw what it looked like. Example seven, identify linear functions by graphing. Our real context is pool. Fernando uses a garden hose to fill his empty pool. The table shows the amount of water in the pool after every five minutes. Part A, determine linearity. So we're gonna determine if this is linear or nonlinear. The amount of water in the pool increases by 60 gallons during the first five minutes. Right? It was an empty pool, so when he started, there was no water in it, so it went up 60 in the first five minutes. 
it's also increasing by 60 each five minutes after that. So the change in the water is constant for every interval of five minutes. This is a linear function. Part B, if we graph these points, they can be connected by a straight line and straight lines make a linear function. So this function would be linear. Check your understanding, read through the situation and use the table to determine if the function is linear or nonlinear over the years shown. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This one, if we're looking, if it's constant, so there's a one year increase, there's a one year increase, there's a one year increase. So if this was a constant, we would be going up the same amount every time one year passes. So 380 to 425, the wage went up 45 cents. 1996 to 1997, the wage went up by 40 cents. So right away I can tell that this is non-linear because it is not going up the same amount. 2007 to 2008, it went up by 70 cents. So definitely non-linear. So let's read through and determine which it is. The function is linear, no. The function is non-linear, maybe. The function is linear, no. The function is non-linear. So let's see which of these reasons. There was a 45 cent increase between 1990 and 1991, yep, and 70 cents between 2007 and 2008. That is what we showed here and here. So B, that is our proof that it is nonlinear. It did not go up by a constant amount. And for D, although this function is discrete, that is not necessarily our reasoning for it being nonlinear. We could have a discrete function that makes a straight line with the points, we just wouldn't connect them. So being discrete is not a criteria for linear or nonlinear.